the problem of evil. This thought experiment raises questions about why there is suffering in the world if God is all-powerful and all-good. If God can prevent evil and suffering and wants to, why do they exist? This difficult question challenges beliefs in an all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-good God, suggesting that these traits may not be compatible with the existence of evil and suffering. It has sparked much debate in theology and philosophy. Is it as simple to say, where there's light, there must be darkness? The trolley problem. This scenario asks the difficult ethical question. Would you sacrifice one person to save many people? Imagine a trolley speeding down a track, about to hit five people. You're next to a lever that can divert the trolley to another track, but there's one person there. Do you pull the lever to save five people at the expense of one? Different ethical beliefs shape views on what's right. Consequentialists prioritize maximizing overall well-being, favoring saving five lives. Deontologists emphasize defending rights, potentially refusing to pull the lever. The trolley problem serves as a useful tool for exploring ethical dilemmas and the principles guiding human decisions. The Omnipotence Paradox this scenario questions whether an all-powerful being can create a task it cannot complete. If it can, then it's not all-powerful because it can't complete the task. If it can't create such a task, then it's also not all-powerful because there's something it can't do. This paradox explores the logical limits of omnipotence and challenges our understanding of what it means to be all-powerful. It also makes us think about what it means for gods to be all-powerful and how much we can really understand about religious ideas. The Veil of Ignorance Imagine a scenario where people are hidden behind a curtain, not knowing anything about their own talents or how rich or poor they are. They have to come up with rules for society without knowing anything about themselves. This exercise asks people to think about what's fair without knowing their own situation. They would choose rules that benefit everyone, making a fair society. It prompts us to consider principles of justice that benefit everyone, regardless of their individual circumstances, and encourages empathy and fairness in social decision-making. The brain in a vat asks us to imagine a scenario where a mad scientist removes our brain from our body and places it in a container with fluid. Electrodes have been connected to the brain, and these are connected to a computer that generates images and sensations. The key idea is, since all information about the world is processed through our brain, the computer should be able to manipulate manipulate this information to create a simulated reality for the person. This raises the question, how do we know if our experiences are real or just computer-generated illusions? Inspired by the movie The Matrix, this experiment makes us think deeply about the nature of reality and what it means to be human. The Ship of Theseus is a thought experiment that asks if something stays the same when you change all its parts. Imagine you have a ship named Theseus. Over time, every piece of it gets replaced with new ones. Is it still the same ship? Some say yes because it still looks and does the same stuff, but others say no because every piece is different. This makes us think about what makes something what it is, even if it changes a lot. It's like wondering if you're still you after changing every part of your body. Imagine a historic building that has been renovated over centuries, with each original brick replaced. Is it still the same building with all new materials? Schrodinger's cat. This is a thought experiment or paradox from quantum mechanics. Imagine a sealed box with a cat inside. Inside the box, there's also a device that can release poison at any moment. We can't see what's happening inside the box. The experiment proposes that until you open the box, you don't know if the cat is alive or dead. Therefore, until observation, the cat exists in a state of both being alive and dead at the same time. This experiment challenges our understanding of reality and the role of observation in shaping it. It makes us question how much we really know about the world around us, just like when you don't know if your pet is sleeping or hiding. The Swamp Man. This thought experiment envisions a scenario where a man is hiking in a remote swamp when a lightning bolt strikes a tree, disintegrating him instantly. Simultaneously, another bolt of lightning hits the marsh, creating an exact copy of the man, including all his memories and beliefs. Is this new copy the same person as the original, or a different one? The Swamp Man test pushes us to rethink what makes us human. It asks if our body, memories, and consciousness define who we are, and if identity comes from within or is shaped by external events. The Chinese Room This experiment asks the question, can a machine understand or mimic language? In the Chinese Room experiment, there's a person who doesn't know Chinese locked in a room with a book of Chinese symbols and instructions. When given notes in Chinese, they respond using the book and instructions, making it seem like they understand Chinese but they're just following rules and don't really get the language. This makes us wonder if simply following rules and using symbols can truly mean understanding, raising questions about consciousness, and whether machines or AI can really understand language like humans do. The Experience Machine Imagine you're offered a machine that can make you feel like you're living your dream life. 
Everything would be perfect. You'd have all the happiness and success you want. But here's the catch. It's not real. You'd just be plugged into a machine, experiencing a fake world. The big question is, would you choose this fake happiness over real life? This experiment makes us think about what really matters to us, whether it's the real experiences and challenges of life, or just feeling good, even if it's not real. Virtual reality and digital escapism in today's world come to mind. Buridan's donkey. This experiment from the 14th century questions our free will. It illustrates a donkey, equally hungry and thirsty, standing between a pile of hay and a bucket of water. Unable to decide which to choose, it ultimately dies due to indecision. This thought experiment reflects the paralysis of choice when faced with equally attractive options, emphasizing the importance of making decisions to avoid stagnation and consequences. It makes us think about what influences our choices and how we need to prioritize to make decisions in life. The scenario teaches us to take action and understand that not deciding can have bad results. The Prisoner's Dilemma this well-known concept from economic game theory examines finding a balance between self-interest and working together with others. The dilemma presents two suspects, unable to communicate, facing separate decisions to either confess or remain silent. If both stay silent, they get one year in prison. If both confess, they receive a harsh penalty of five years. However, if one confesses and the other remains silent, the confessor goes free while the silent one faces a severe 20-year sentence. In the dilemma, it makes sense to betray the other person no matter what they do if you only think about yourself. This experiment raises questions about trust, rationality, and cooperation in decision-making, showing how individual incentives can undermine collective outcomes. The Sorites Paradox This experiment poses a puzzle about defining boundaries and thresholds. It asks, when does a slight change in quantity result in a noticeable change in quality? Picture a stack of building blocks, starting with a tall tower. As you remove blocks, the tower remains unchanged at first. Even if one more block goes, it's still a tower. This goes on until just a few blocks remain. When does it stop being a tower? The paradox does this with the term heap. It argues that one grain of sand does not constitute a heap. It follows that two grains do not, and if two do not, then three do not, and so on. This reasoning leads to the absurd conclusion that no number of grains of sand make a heap. This paradox highlights the ambiguity in concepts like old, young, or bald, where small changes don't seem to alter the overall category. This applies to many areas like morals, politics, and science. This paradox challenges us to think about where to draw the line in various situations, even beyond tangible objects. The utility monster raises the question of whether the happiness of one individual should outweigh the combined happiness of many others. It presents a hypothetical creature, the utility monster, who derives vastly more pleasure from resources than others do. This scenario challenges utilitarianism, an ethical theory that aims to maximize overall happiness. It suggests that the preferences of one individual, the utility monster, should outweigh those of others. This raises concerns about prioritizing individual desires over the well-being of many. It tests our understanding of ethical decision-making and the consequences of strictly adhering to certain principles. It prompts reflection on balancing individual desires with the greater good in moral reasoning. Plato's Allegory of the Cave explores the nature of reality and knowledge through a philosophical thought experiment. The story tells us about a group of prisoners who have been chained to the wall of a cave their whole life. There's a fire behind them, and they only see shadows on the wall cast by this fire, mistaking them for reality. The story then considers what would happen if a prisoner needed to leave. What would they see outside the cave, and would they trust it? How would they adapt? And upon returning to the cave, what would happen? This story questions the accuracy of our perceptions, suggesting deeper truths beyond our understanding. It encourages questioning and seeking truth beyond appearances to uncover essential truths about ourselves and the world. Mary's Room Mary is a scientist and has lived her whole life in a room with only a black and white TV. She learned everything about the science of color, but has never seen color herself. Once Mary is allowed out of the room, she sees a red apple for the first time. The question is whether this experience teaches her something new about seeing the color red, or if she already knows everything about it. This experiment asks if actually experiencing something teaches us more than just knowing about it scientifically. It suggests that understanding feelings and experiences goes beyond just knowing how our bodies work, showing that science has limits in explaining how we think and feel. Subscribe to see more of our videos and hit that like button to show your support. You might like the video showing on your screen right now, so go click it.